Welcome to AATV, I'm Gareth Gadcharvey and today we're going to talk about getting a basic Vietnam airsofting loadout together. Both a budget version and maybe splashing out a bit more for something more substantial. So this is our base layer for the Vietnam infantry loadout. Now fans of the film Platoon will notice this is pretty much what Charlie Sheen is wearing when he walks off the plane into the sunshine. And we're looking at a third pattern jungle uniform, in jacket and trousers, and there's a ripstop material. Now this is quite late for the Vietnam War, but for Airsoft it's perfect because it's easy to get as a repro and it's also less likely to snag, get ripped, get ruined at a game. On my feet I've got jungle boots. But again, wear what boots are best for you playing airsoft. Now the good thing is, early on in the Vietnam War, standard black leather combat boots were worn. So you can get away with that look as well and not look out of place. Lastly, I'm wearing a normal green British Army t-shirt. Now these are almost identical to the American ones of the, of the 60s and 70s. Really cheap, two pound or so from an army surplus shop. The actual uniform itself you can get for around £60 for jacket and trousers, less if you find second hand on sites like eBay. And jungle boots will cost you between 20 20, 30 pounds for a reproduction pair or a second hand pair, up to maybe 100 pounds if you want a large size of real Vietnam War dated jungle boots, but I wouldn't wear those for airsoft because they're too precious. Lastly, on my head I've got the cap hot weather. Now, I quite like these baseball cap style hats, but they were universally disliked by the soldiers at the time, so you'll probably find a boonie hat would be more for you. So, as a cheap airsofting loadout, we just added a few things to that basic layer. First of all, we swap the cap hot weather for a boonie hat. Really popular, really practical. Keeps the sun and the rain out of your eyes. It's comfy, breaks up your outline. For load bearing equipment, we've got absolutely minimal. So these are actually cotton bandoliers that would hold stripper clips of ammunition, but guys actually put 20 round magazines inside them. Now, if you're running 20 round magazines, you can actually get away with one or two of these for a whole day's play. And the great thing is, repros are about 10 quid and real ones are about 10 quid as well, if you don't mind them having like mid 70s dates. When it comes to choosing a replica for Vietnam Airsoft, you really are spoiled for choice. So perhaps the most classic design to go for is this SEMA M16A1. Now you might notice this is Anvils and it's currently set up for his British Army loadout with a British Army sling. Vietnam slings aren't that different, we'll show you one later. The M16 was issued to virtually everybody and it's really the iconic weapon of the Vietnam War. Early ones have a duckbill flash hider but that was soon deleted because that used to snag on vegetation. But we can show you one of those as well. But the M16 is really the go-to choice for the Vietnam Rifleman look. So as mentioned, if you wanted to go for that super detailed look, you could probably go for maybe an earlier M16, like this classic army model, with the three-prong flash hider, which as we said, would snag in vegetation. If you look here, we have an original Vietnam War sling. Again, they're not that expensive. You're looking at about 20 to 30 pounds. There's a little bit of detail to set the gun off. I've taped a cleaning rod to the side of the rifle because these jammed all the time in combat with the early models. So guys kept the cleaning rod close to hand. So lastly, we're going to show you the sort of rifle you might want to take if you're a carbine lover. This is an M653, and for fans of Platoon, you'll notice it's the rifle in Platoon. But for fans of Vietnam, you'll notice it's not actually a weapon used during the Vietnam War. These are actually from the Philippines Army. But they look exactly like, to the untrained eye, the classic CAR-15 or XM-177 SMG carbine-sized M16 rifle. <laughs> Moving on to actual proper webbing or load bearing gear, the classic webbing of the Vietnam War, especially in the early years, was the M56 webbing system. Now, it's a classic product of its time. It's quite heavy webbing that absorbs water, lots of metal fastening. Later on, they'd move to nylon pouches, but for the Vietnam platoon apocalypse now, look, you really want this stuff. So the key features are ammo pouches, which are designed for the M14, but then used for the M16. So M16 mags are a little bit low down in them. And if you have real grenades or even the right sort of airsoft ones, you can plug them in to these little grenade attachments on the side. There's an adjustable belt, and again, it's quite archaic. It's a very old design. Canteen carriers. These are actually very, very modern canteens, but again, it's for airsoft, so we don't care that much. Now, I'm wearing two canteen pouches. In reality, guys could wear four, five, even more, because it was so hot, they were losing buckets of water every day. And then lastly, on the belt area, we have the book pack. Now, now the book pack is really useful for keeping those airsoft essentials like your gash, your BBs, all those sort of things during a game. And the other thing is, 
These suspenders that hold on the whole belt kit come in several sizes, from a medium to a long to an extra long. Now long and extra long sizes for tall guys are getting harder to find, but if you put that butt pack on, it actually extends the length of these straps at the back and makes it a lot easier for you to wear. Lastly, we have a compass pouch, which is quite usually held a field dressing. And then for a little bit of extra detail, again, copying the Barnes and Elias look, I've added a snap link carabiner. Now this isn't actually an army one, it looks like one. It's a civilian one from the 80s, but they're pretty much the same. Audated webbing isn't cheap. You're looking at a minimum of £40 for a second hand set, upwards to about £100 for a really good fully loaded one. Repro sets might cost you about £70. So if you want to splash out on Vietnam webbing, but you don't really want to drop £100 straight away till you're sure, check out Greek webbing. Post-war Greek webbing looks very, very similar to US Army webbing of the Vietnam War. There are a few minor differences, but for the airsoft rule of 10 foot away or more, you're not really going to spot it. Perhaps the most iconic silhouette of the Vietnam War though is the M1 helmet with the Mitchell cover quite often covered with lots of graffiti. Now the good news is the M1 helmet was used by nearly everybody in NATO for about 50 years so they're really cheap to get. You can get them sort of German models or Belgian models between 10 to 20 pounds. If you want to go for a real US one from the period you might be looking at closer to 100 pounds. The key thing is though, get one of these Mitchell covers. Original ones are getting scarcer to find but people like Soldier Fortune do excellent repros. And again, you can customise your helmet by adding one of these camouflage bands and then maybe a tin opener, some spare rounds, sunburn cream, whatever you need really to stamp your identity over your own Vietnam loadout. So our last bit of kit for the Vietnam War purist is the M69 flat jacket. Now there are several versions of flat jacket used during the Vietnam War, but the M69 is quite iconic. Again, these are like a Kevlar layer to protect you from fragmentation. They're hot, they're cumbersome. Guys only really wore them in defence or city fighting or when they knew they could hunt them off somewhere because you don't want to run around in one of these too much. Now these flat jackets are very expensive to find in large sizes. The good news is the British Army made a copy of them in the 1970s. Now the British Army version has a plastic pad on the shoulder to stop the rifle slings slipping off your shoulder. If you remove these, you can get away with them as a Vietnam style flat jacket. The Israelis also did a very similar model. Now these are slightly different colours, but for airsoft we don't care about things like that. We're not going to living history shows, we're going to go and skirmish and play some 6mm BB war. Now this is now cumbersome to play in. I've got a helmet on, I've got body armour. The actual lightweight jungle fatigue is sort of suffering a bit. They're in, on their own they're great, but now I'm feeling a little bit weighed down. Now for most airsoft games, unless you really want the look, helmets, armour, I really wouldn't bother, but if you're going to a milsim or film sim type game, quite often a helmet will add an extra bandage or hit to your character or player, and body arm will do the same, so I'd be two points more resilient in a Gunman Vietnam film sim game, for example. If you think of Vietnam Load as something you'd like to try, as well as this guide, you can check out our forthcoming video where we compare repro and real Vietnam kits so you can make sure that you're buying exactly the right thing for you. I've been Gareth Gadcharvi for AATV. Thanks for watching and most importantly stay safe and we'll see you next time.